Hello and welcome to the video related to chapter 8 in the book Interaction Design Beyond Human Computer Interaction, 5th edition. The chapter has the name Data Gathering. And in this video, we will talk about basics in data gathering, qualitative methods, quant and quantitative methods. Basics in data gathering. The first thing that we need to know is what do we want to find out? If our question has a binary answer like yes or no, most possibly we will use quantitative methods. Similarly, if we search to find minimum, maximum or average. However, if we are looking to find out um, what kind of applications people use to communicate nowadays or why person chose to use an application for doing a specific work or how a user feels after using an application, then most possibly we will use qualitative methods. Participants. Participants are the people who participate in our study. Most possibly we will not be able to recruit all uh, the target audience of our design of our application. So we will need to pick part of the audience. This is called sampling. There are different ways to pick specific people, to, be, to, be, to pick your participants from the general audience. Uh, the book refers to some of those and if you're not satisfied you can follow the link that I have in the description for more methods of sampling. Most commonly uh, known methods is convenience sampling, where it means that you grab the first people that they should they shoot to your target audience and that you find. So the first people that you can reach. Or the snowball sampling. That is um, that you know one person that suits your target group and you ask this person if he, know, if he or she knows other people with similar characteristics. This is called snowball sampling because it starts like a snowball. You find one and this one spreads uh, the word to other people and then more people make up. Ethics. You always need to inform participants about what they're going to participate in. Who is the funder? Where their data will be stored? How they will be used? How they will be protected? They're, they should have the right to withdraw from the trial and um, ask um, their data. They should uh, be safe. Uh, you shouldn't risk their lives or if you do you should ask approval from uh, relevant uh, authorities. In this video you can um, see five unethical experiments that happen. Most commonly known here in Sweden is Vipe Holmes experiment where doctors and specifically dentists um, try to find the effect of sugar on teeth by stuffing uh, mentally unstable uh, patients of a clinic with sugar. This in the beginning was ethical uh, because the ethical guidelines weren't that evolved. However, as the experiment continued throughout the years, the ethical guidelines changed, uh, but the experiment didn't change. Ethics in European Union. We should follow the ethics of its country and the ethics of the general group of the countries that we are in. The companies and agencies, as well as government, have to comply with the general data protection regulation, which ensures the safety of the data of the European Union citizens. You should always ask the place that you are working in, 
about their ethical procedure and getting informed about that. Please take a minute to watch this video about the general data protection regulation. It's only 55 seconds. Data recording and pilot sound. The um, data we will collect, in the best case, it should be exactly the data that we need, not more, not less. We shouldn't be hoarders, we shouldn't just collect everything. Pilot study. A pilot study is a dry run of the actual study. study. If the pi pilot study doesn't change the, um, the study uh, much, like if you have an interview guide and you realize that you don't need to change the interview guide, then you can keep the results of the pilot study as part of your study. Different uh, types that you can record data are audio, visual, audiovisual recordings and biometric data. You need to inform the participants if you need to record them. Qualitative methods. The most commonly known is interview. An interview can be structure, semi-structure, unstructured, group interview or focus group. Structure interview is when you have a list of questions and you always go through this list of questions without deviating from this guide. Semi-structure interview is that you have questions, you have also some themes that you want to cover and you can deviate from the um, guide if you if the participant uh, says something that it may be interested interesting for the research unstructured uh, interviews are more like discussions so you have a broad subject and you discuss it with the um, participant or better you let the participant talk about this specific subject Group interviews and focus groups. Many people think that they are the same. Group interviews are interviews with many people in the same room. The interviewer has a really important role in the group interviews as he or she asks uh, the people what they think one by one. While in the focus groups, the facilitator has more of a background role so the participants can discuss with each other. Some advices for interviews. Don't use leading questions. So you shouldn't say how much did you like this because you assume that the person liked the thing that you're asking. You can ask instead, how did you find this? Another type of um, questions that should be avoided when it comes to interviews is yes and no questions. Instead of asking, did you like this? You can ask, how did you find this? You should motivate the interviewee, especially in my experience in the Nordic countries, by saying yes, uh, please continue, or just nodding or saying mm-hmm, so they can keep talking. Think that you should let them space and time to express themselves. And this time that you can keep silent changes from culture to culture then there are observations. Observations can be in the wild. So in the natural environment, if you want to observe someone using an application that they use in their work by uh, visiting their work environment and observing them throughout the day. But it can be also observation in the lab. So you can have a person uh, in a control environment where his or her actions are recorded and he or she goes through specific tasks with the technology. Finally, your participation in the observation. You can be a fly on the wall. That means that you don't participate at all. You only stay in one place and look and observe what the others are doing. And it can be fully 
participant observation where you take a role in the group that you observe. For example, you become a part of the interaction design team and while you are working with them, you also collect data for your research. Observations are really demanding. The information that you can get, it can be audio, visual, audio, visual notes and so on, but it will be really unstructured. They may extend for a long period of time and the data are really rich data. More rich than the data that you can get from the interviews. You can do also a digital observation, like uh, Nardi did in her PhD thesis, I think it was. She described her experience as a player in the world of Warcraft. You can watch the video of Nardi's um, uh, research uh, by clicking the link in the description. Some advices for observations. Keep in mind that you are going to have a big amount of data, which are also hard to analyze. Recording can be challenging, as you may not be able to record 24-7 what you're doing. You may need to keep notes. And the final uh, advice is to keep a research diary. It's um, a way to be systematic and log what you have observed every single day. If you are interested in observations on the go and when it comes to uh, mobile devices, you can read the article Experimental Evaluation of Five Methods for Collecting Emotions in the Field Settings with Mobile Applications by uh, Isomursu, Veinamo and Kuti. Quantitative methods. Quantitative methods can be questionnaires and the um, data are easier to analyze because the questions in the questionnaires are specific and if you use a software, then the software oftentimes uh, analyze the questions, like summarize the results and so on. You need to have some basic uh, understanding of statistics as you may need to find the minimum, maximum average and so on. Some advices for the questionnaires. Be sure that your questionnaire is well formulated and they have specific questions. When you say that do you use Facebook regularly, regularly can be once per week, once per day, every day or even once per year it is regular so be specific estimate the time that the user or the participant will need to fill in the questionnaire if you have too many questions the participants may start answering uh, randomly and that will distort your data and decide uh, if you want the participant to force them to use. Many people use a linkered scale where are odd number of uh, choices, three, five, seven, and so on. In this odd number, you let the people choose the middle choice. Uh, oftentimes, many people choose this choice because they don't want to make a choice. So if you want to force them to choose yes or no, it's better to use um, numbers like uh, choices, like four choices or eight choices. So they cannot choose the middle choice. On the online questionnaires, you should also watch out uh, for the GDPR because uh, you need to know if the um, uh, questionnaire that you are using saves the personal data of a European Union citizen inside or outside of Europe. Finally, what are biometric data? Biometric data are data that come from our body. Heart rate, uh, body temperature, sweat, pupil size, blood pressure. These are not 
common uh, in the general uh, uh, design of uh, commonly used applications but when it comes to gaming for example and especially to games that are supposed to scare you or uh, raise your adrenaline can be useful information to gather in order to understand the user experience better. Thank you for watching. And this was the end of the video related to chapter 8. See you in the next video.